TikTok, time to rock. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all around the world. I'm your friendly neighborhood philosopher, David Wood, and with me now is the Assyrian Encyclopedia himself. Hmm. The man who is, according to many, the greatest apologist in history yeah, right. against Not Islam. Against Islam. May the Lord Jesus save me from believing that. Keep me pure and holy and humble for the glory of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to get puffed up like you and become worthless for the kingdom. So no, 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 it. no, no. I mean, I, I didn't say, I didn't say you don't have massive problems, right? Because yeah. if I, if you let me finish, I would say yeah. greatest apologist against Islam in history and a total mental case and you put them together, then, you know, you kind of, you kind of sabotage yourself. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah. yeah. All That's right. True. So, ladies and, and gentlemen, way, well, what's up? I got my cousin here, John Cheese. He's laughing. LOL. He, you made him laugh at me. My own cousin, John Cheese. And John Cheese. That's messed up. Green Bay, Bay Packers, they stink. Packers stink, buddy. They are bears garbage. all the way. They are. All right. I'm not going to root for the Bears, but yeah, Packers are garbage. Okay. Cheesehead, go ahead, man. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to believe this. We put out the challenge to 1.6 billion Muslims in the world. Some say 1.8 billion Muslims in the world. These Muslims always claim your Bible's been corrupted, and we say, "Yeah, but your God, your God says it hasn't." So why would you say that? And so we show them from their Quran, where their own God says that the Bible is the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. That's not enough for them. We show them where their prophet affirmed the Torah and the gospel as texts that were still in the possession of Jews and Christians and are still authoritative for them. That's not enough. They still insist that the Bible's been corrupted. So we ask them to show, can you, can you show us a single verse, just one? Can you show us one? Just one verse. You've got all those verses. You, you've got, you, you've got all these verses. You've got all these verses in your book. Can't you just show us one? Can't you show us one, one verse where Allah says that our book's been corrupted, where He's He's not affirming the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our book like He does throughout the Quran? Can you show us one? And then we invite them. They don't have to tell us what they're going to say. We invite them. Come on, join us live. You can call. You can call in. You could be on Skype, and just just stump us, man. Just start. Just start coming at us with all these verses that you guys think are in there. And what happens? We're here alone, Sam. We're here exactly. alone. Exactly. All, all by myself. So, hey, by the way, I got I to gotta say something aside. Those... Uh, YouTube, uh, what are videos you did when you're that artist? I gotta give you credit, man. That was phenomenal. You, someone should nominate you for an Academy Award. The way you did it with the hat, the way you were speaking, you had me rolling on the floor laughing, dude. It's amazing that besides being the world's greatest dictator, you got all this natural acting talent, and someone needs to discover it really, really fast. That was impressive. I gotta admit, the hat and the way you're talking with your tone <laughs> work of art that was that yeah was great it's it's funny because 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 uh, uh we're just about i'm just getting started with that in fact that's why uh if people wonder why i'm a little slow uh making videos um my garage has basically been my storage area for like the last two years got it this is where we you know put all the boxes and stuff like that uh but i need that area for my art <laughs> <laughs> I need that for my art area. Put a drill press in there and so on, but I need I need space to work on my Quran creations. So uh yeah, I've been uh I've been um yeah. putting stuff in storage and so on like that to to get it out of my garage so I have a better area to work. But yeah, that channel's gonna blow up, man. I posted one video and I have over ten thousand subscribers off that off that one video. Uh, I think it has around forty thousand views, and so just imagine just imagine once my true creativity comes through all the yeah. things i can do all the things i can do with this, <laughs> oh with this lovely pages of this lovely book oh, yeah. 
oh. <laughs> with the hat and the the voice, the tone. I mean, where'd you where'd you get that? The way you were speaking, my work of art. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, I see you, Sam. <laughs> I see you. Surprise! Surprise, Sam. Surprise! Holy moly, man! The whole the narrative. All right, so. Um, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. yeah. We're talking about what a great undiscovered talent you have to be, uh, that you are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have uh, we have this amazing situation where 1.6, 1.8, whatever, billion Muslims in the world will tell us, yes, the Quran affirms, the Quran affirms the corruption of the Bible. Yeah. And then we say, join us, join us live and actually defend that. And they won't do it. They won't come near it. Neither Mustafa, who is acting brave in the comment section right now, he's not coming on tomorrow. Yeah, that's the that that's. Uh, I don't know. His his internet is pretty bad. Pretty bad um, he might be able to do just audio or something like that. But but he can let us know what he wants to do. He's been in there nonstop. Um, he's been in there nonstop before we went live. I don't know what's going on now. Um, all, right. all right. So, but here here's here's what happens, Sam. Here's what happens. Yes. You'll notice Muslim apologists, Adnan Rashid, Farid, all these guys, they're real brave in the videos on their own sites, right? Because they know when they post a video saying, ha ha, I have refuted David hmm. Wood and Sam Shamoon, they know that the vast majority of their followers are not going to come and see if what they said is correct, right? It's a version of the 99-1 rule. They know most of their followers are just going to say, oh, Adnan says he's refuted it, therefore Adnan has refuted it, dirt, 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 right? So they know that. So that's why they stick over there. But when we invite them, say, guys, come on, come on, all of you at the same time, all of you at the same time can come join us. They don't want to, they don't want to come, they don't want to come anywhere near this. So basically there are these, there are these couple places where the Muslim apologists are really brave on their own channels, and in the comment section, they love to post, Muslims love to post comments saying, ha ha, we've refuted you. This is the verse that refutes you. Um, and they're happy to do that. But uh, as far as coming on, joining live and explaining it, that's, that's, where, that's where they draw the line. But you know what, Sam? Mm -hmm. They've been brave. They've been brave in the comment section. So I went ahead and took a bunch of screenshots of the comment section. So, All right, let's do it. I didn't let's show. I did not show you these ahead of time. No, you didn't. So no, no, I'm no. gonna try and stump you. Stump the chump for these guys. Stump the Assyrian. Gonna chump. try and stump them for you. All right, are you ready? All right, guys. So uh, Sam, just just briefly review what the problem is in case uh, anyone's here for the first time. Just briefly review what the problem is that we're drawing attention to, and then we'll look at some of the Muslim responses. Yes, and it, as is my habit, you know. I do this even before we begin. We praise the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask the Father in the name of his beloved Son, our Lord Jesus. Cleanse us in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus, and fill us with the Holy Spirit. Bless this session to speak truth without error and speak it clearly. To bless the people of God, to strengthen them for the glory of Jesus, to reach Muslims, and to convict Muslims to fall in love with the true Jesus, the Son of God, their only hope of salvation. We need you, Father. We love you. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we need you. And we love and need you, Holy Spirit. Take over for the glory of Jesus in Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, with that said, uh, we're going to sound like Amen. a broken record, and it's important. <clears throat> the reason why is because I've learned long ago we need to hear something over and over again for months, if not years, until it becomes second nature. Because the goal of these sessions, David's goal, my goal, the goals of others, like Islam Critique, is that you learn the material, you understand the material, you Christians who love Jesus, and then use the material to convict Muslims to escape <clears throat> the lies of Muhammad and his false god Allah and fall in love with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So what's, what's the point? The Quran confirms the very biblical books in our possession today. We know that. Because the Quran says that the Jesus of history, now again, David and I both agree, we don't believe that Jesus of the Quran is the Jesus of history. But for argument's sake, for argument's sake, <clears throat> we'll go with it. Isa ibn Maryam, that's the Jesus of history, the Jesus of the New Testament. 
confirm the scriptures in his possession that he had access to. The Quran then says, Muhammad confirmed the scriptures in the hands of the Jews and Christians that they were reading, that Muhammad had access to and consulted. Well, those scriptures are identical to what we have today. There is no dispute. You can't get around it. The Christians and Jews at the time of Muhammad did not have different books from what we have today. And in light of the historical, textual <clears throat> evidence, we have a plethora of manuscript support for the Bible. About 25,000 copies of the Bible, folks. And I'm not exaggerating. This is simply a fact. About 25,000 copies of biblical books in various languages, the largest of which, which happen to be in Latin. We have about 10,000. <clears> and these copies are from the second century, in the case of the Old Testament, we found the Dead Sea Scrolls, 1947. We found copies of Old Testament books written in Hebrew that are written 200, 200 years before the time of Jesus and preserved. And we even have a translation of those scrolls in English. It's called the Dead Sea Scrolls Bible. So we have copies before Christ. We have copies of the biblical books in the second century, third century, fourth century, fifth century, sixth century, seventh century. And they are identical to what we read today. So if Muslims, you believe in Muhammad and you believe the Quran, you have no choice but to agree that the Bible we're reading from today is the uncorrupt, pure words of God. But if you agree with the Bible, the Bible teaches things that Muhammad contradicted. God is a trinity. Jesus is God in the flesh, the Son of God. Died on the cross, was buried, rose again, ascended to heaven, sits enthroned as king of kings and lord of lords, will return <clears throat> physically, bodily, to reign as king of kings and lord of lords. He's not returning as a Muslim. And every knee must bow to him, and every tongue must confess and worship that he is lord to the glory of God the Father, and accept that he died for our sins. All of which proves that Quran is a lie, and Muhammad is an antichrist. So you are stuck. you got to accept my Bible. But if you decide to attack the Bible anyway, that means you're saying the Quran doesn't know what it's talking about. Muhammad didn't know what he was talking about because Muhammad and the Quran agree the Bible is uncorrupt. You disagree, so you're stuck again. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. That's Islamic Dilemma 101. All uh, right. Uh, Ask for JP said, uh, question, have you ever had a follower of Islam admit that you make a good point and perhaps the gospel is true? Uh, hundreds of hundreds of yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot well, of times. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, tons. And uh, uh, as for JP, um, you, can get, you can go to some of the videos on this channel. Uh, type in Leaving Islam Volume because I've had multiple volumes, but then I've done a... a matter of fact, there should be a playlist of um, comments from ex-Muslims. Some, some people leave Islam and become atheists or agnostic. Some people leave Islam, uh, become Christians of one variety or another. But yes... Um, there are lots of Muslims. There are lots of Muslims who uh, do get the points we're making, and many of them leave Islam. Here's an interesting: Is this someone messing around or what? But Harris Al Kalama said, "I am Muslim, and I believe that the Bible has been perfectly preserved." So that's good. They're good. Yeah. In fact, can I give a uh, two 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 true testimonials? One of which I still have the session on my YouTube channel. I have two true testimonials. One of them is recorded on my YouTube channel. If you go to my YouTube channel, do Islamic Trinity. On Pal Talk, both of these conversations took place on Pal Talk years ago. True story, folks. And there are some people from Pal Talk who are there who can bear witness. And one of them is still recorded. It's on my YouTube channel. I used the Islamic Trinity, Islamic Trinity, to get two Muslims to admit, you know what? We have a trinity of our own, and therefore, if we're going to be consistent, we cannot attack your Trinitarian view as being contrary to monotheism. Otherwise, we condemn Islam as a false religion. <clears throat> One of the individuals has disappeared since then. He hasn't resurfaced. I'm hoping he's a Christian now. The other individual did become a Christian. His name was Ahlul Bayt Ali. Ahlul Bayt Ali. When I had the discussion with him, he said, you know, yes, I got to admit, we have a trinity of our own, and if I'm going to condemn your trinity as paganism, then I have to condemn Islam. And I hadn't heard from him for maybe over six months. Six months later, I heard from him, and he told me, I'm no longer a Muslim. He goes, ever since that conversation, I started watching William Lane Craig's debates on the resurrection. He goes, now I'm convinced Christianity is true. 
Jesus died for my sins and God raised them from the dead. So I'm a Christian. Now I'm looking to see which branch of Christianity to embrace. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's cool. And uh, I think you're just getting started because as many people as you block, you still keep getting more and more people watching, right? I mean, people, people, people have pointed out, you'd probably have the biggest apologetics channel on YouTube if you didn't block 99% yeah, no, of I, I, I 99 probably yeah. people. <laughs> I probably, well, that's uh, because I'm a misfit. You know, I got my issue. So that's my area. What are you going to do? Yeah, so uh, Harris here says, uh, I'm Muslim and believed that the Bible has been perfectly preserved. Um, yeah, this is actually connected to um, something Mustafa is here is saying. And guys, uh, Mustafa is a teenager, so keep that oh, in mind. Is? Yeah, keep keep in mind. Oh, yeah, man. keep that in mind when you're responding. Yeah, okay. don't be don't right. be a. I'm uh, gonna no. ignore him now. I didn't know that. All right. No, 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 no. It's fine. We'll we'll, uh, we'll 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 talk to teenagers. But I know lots of people like to you know be mean in the comment yeah. section, say mean things. Keep in mind you're talking you're talking to a teenager. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and that's my policy too. If you're like a teenager, then you know what? I'll be very. I'll take it very easy. I thought he's one of these grown guys like Sekar Hussein who likes to yeah. run their mouth off. Okay, mm -hmm. now I know. All right. So, uh, but but here, uh, Harris says um, he believed that the Bible has been perfectly preserved. And uh, notice. Is he really? Because he's got a symbol. He's got this crescent moon. He's got the David Jewish star and a cross in it. So Yeah, he might, be, he might be. Yeah, who, who knows? Uh, but this is going to lead into Mustafa's comment. Um if you wanted to take the Quran seriously, ladies and gentlemen, if you wanted to take the Quran, you, you Muslims, if you wanted to take the Quran seriously, well, guess what? Your God claims to be perfectly clear, and he does nothing but affirm the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our scriptures. So did your prophet. So did your prophet in the Hadith. Your prophet says that we have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God. That's what he said. Right, you guys say the opposite. Oh nope, you guys got this corrupt books. You can't trust them. Blah 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 blah. That's why you all need to learn the Quran. All right, uh, so that's what you say. So you're basically telling us the opposite of what your your God and your prophet said, and then you tell us to believe in your God and your prophet. When, gosh, if you guys are correct, then your God and your prophet have a problem saying the exact opposite of what they really mean. And so it's not it's not your God and your prophet who define Islam. It's you guys, and you guys could just say anything, and it doesn't matter if it contradicts your God and your prophet, because your your God and your prophet don't don't set the rules according to Muslim apologists. If I were a Muslim who took the Quran and the Hadith seriously, I would have to conclude that Christians have the inspired, preserved, authoritative Word of God, and so I would be forced to simply reinterpret. Right? I would be forced to say, yes, Christians have the word of God, and so I'm just going to have to reinterpret this to bring it in line with Islam. Or I would have to interpret the Quran in light of what the Bible says. Right? But check out what uh, check out Mustafa's comment here, Sam. Mustafa said, yeah. Sam, answer the question. Yeah, I saw And that, it's yeah. in all caps, so you know he means it. Sam, yeah, answer the question. That's Sam serious. Shamoon, the Quran rejects Trinity. Yeah. I saw that, yeah. So even if it was affirming the Bible, which it's not, now notice, uh, we've given Mustafa every opportunity in the world to show us one single verse of the Quran which condemns our book or says our book has been corrupt. He couldn't come up with a he couldn't come come up with a single one. Whereas we can give tons of verses, tons and tons and tons and tons of tons showing that the Quran affirms our scripture. So you have zero, we have a bunch. Right? Yeah. Um, but he said, uh, even if it was affirming the Bible, which it's not, it would be affirming Unitarian Christians, not Trinity. And yeah. he apparently still doesn't understand. God, we understand the Quran contradicts the Bible. We understand that. Yeah. That's your problem. The moment your prophet said, I affirm that book, which contradicts my teachings, he self-destructed. That, exactly. that, that was ball game. You should not believe in him. If I if if I if I come out and I tell you, hey, believe in the Quran, it predicts me, and then I say a bunch of things that contradict the Quran, guess what? You just spotted a false prophet, right? Same thing with Muhammad. If he says, I'm affirming your books, and then he completely contradicts them, guess what? You just spotted a total fraud. You shouldn't believe in him. We understand that. But Sam, um, yes, he 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 asked you to answer this question. So sure, that's fine. Uh, and I want people to get the point you just made. I hope it sunk in. And again, by the grace of God, you're a clear communicator. So guys, get what he said. Even if it's true, the Quran contradicts the Trinity, that's the point. 
That's precisely the point. The Quran says it confirms the Bible, but then it contradicts the core teachings of the Bible, such as the Trinity. But again, because he said he's young, maybe he's just being overzealous. And may the Lord Jesus touch Mustafa to see the truth in Jesus' name, because he's young and he may be a little zealous, and he just wants to refute us because his faith is being destroyed slowly but surely by the power of the Holy Spirit. But let me answer this thoroughly. Nowhere, and um, when it comes to David, I'm preaching to the crier. He knows this <clears throat> like the back of his hand. And every Christian who's been following his channel should know this too. If you've been following David Wood and listening to his videos, you should know this already. Nowhere in the Quran does it reject the Trinity as historically defined, affirmed, and believed in. Nowhere. Nada. You will not find a single verse in the Quran where it says they are disbelievers who say Allah is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You ain't going to find it. You're not going to find a single verse in the Quran that says they are disbelievers who believe the Holy Spirit is Allah or the Holy Spirit is God, which is kind of tricky in Arabic because if you say Allah, that's a proper name, and I'll get to that in a minute. But nowhere will you find in the Quran where it says they are disbelievers who say Holy, the Holy Spirit is al ilah the deity. You ain't going to find that either. What you're going to find in the Quran, it says, chapter 5, verse 17, and I'll give you the references. I'll give you the references, so you know I'm not making it up. In chapter 5, verse 17 and 572, you'll find the Quran saying, they are disbelievers who say Allah is the Messiah, the Son of Mary. Now, you may think that's condemning the belief in the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually not. In one of my articles, I actually quote Neil Robinson. Neil Robinson was an Islamist who became a Muslim. He wrote a book about Jesus and Islam. And he cites a Nestorian creed written right around the time of the birth of Muhammad. And in this Nestorian creed, Nestorian means my ancestors, even though they're not Nestorians as defined today. Nestorianism, we'll get into that. Anyway, in that creed, about 20 years before the birth of Muhammad, it says, the Messiah is God, but God is not the Messiah. This is a Christian creed. Before the birth of Muhammad. Messiah is God, but God is not the Messiah. Now for the Christians who are uninitiated, maybe there are Christians here who are not theologically trained. You may th think, what's the difference? Now David, because he's trained philosophically, logically, there is a difference. When you say God is Jesus, it's not necessarily the same as saying Jesus is God. Because in Christian understanding, God is the Father, His Son, and Holy Spirit. So if you say God is Jesus, that miscommunicates because it says all of God is all of Jesus. Well, that would be modalism. But it's proper to say Jesus is God because there you're saying Jesus is God by way of predication. Jesus is God in nature. So already before these statements of the Quran, before the Quran made those statements, Christians were already saying that. You say Messiah is God, but don't say God is Messiah because you're going to miscommunicate. Because for us, God is the Father his eternal word is Son and the Holy Spirit. So when the Quran says they are disbelievers who say Allah is the Messiah, the Son of Mary, historically, already the Orthodox believers did not say that and actually rejected that formulation. So who's the Quran attacking? Not true historic Christians. Well, what about the Trinity as Father, Son, and Spirit? Nowhere in the Quran, not a single verse. Does it say there are dis disbelievers who believe in Allah, His eternal word become flesh, His spirit, or Allah, His Son, and His spirit, or the Father's? Nowhere. What it does say is they are <clears throat> disbelievers, chapter 5, verse 73. They are disbelievers who say Allah is the third of three. Allah is the third of three. Now, guys, don't take my word for it. Keep reading to 75. When you read 73 to 75, there you'll see, if you read chapter 5, verses 73 to 75, and then tie it in with 5116. This is all in the same chapter, all in the same surah, Surah Al Maida, the table spread. When you read it, <clears throat> when you count and see who the other two are, Allah is the third of three. The other two are Jesus and Mary. It's stated there. If you read verse 73 to 75, it says that Jesus and Mary ate food. See how we make the signs clear to them? In other words, Allah can't be the third of three, consisting of Mary and Jesus with Allah. Because Mary and Jesus ate food, that means they're human, they're not divine, and this is confirmed in 5116. In 5116 it says this, that a fictional conversation is going to take place between Jesus and Allah on the last day. Allah will say to Jesus, Oh Jesus, did you tell mankind, take you and your mother as two gods besides 
Allah or in the place of Allah or in derogation of Allah and Allah and Jesus will say praise be to you glory to you I had no right to say what is not true in other words the three are Allah Mary and Jesus now for the life of me David maybe you can help me understand two things number one I'm not aware of any historic Orthodox Orthodox means sound Christian group that believe Allah is the third of three consisting of Allah Mary and Jesus and secondly even if it's referring to a fringe group why is the eternal speech of Allah so concerned and condemning the belief of a fringe group that to this day we don't know who they are but says nothing about what the majority of Christians before Muhammad during Muhammad till this day believe about the Trinity can you explain that to me? Yeah, you, you actually have the same problem with the Quran saying that Jews say that Ezra is the son of Allah. Uh, you find Muhammad saying the same thing in, in the Hadith, that on the judgment, the Jews are going to come forward and say that uh, Ezra, is the, Ezra is the son of Allah. Um, but it's the same thing in that Jews don't say that, right? That's, 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 not a, that's not a Jewish position. And so the best a Muslim could say was, well, there was, maybe there was some fringe group. Maybe there was some fringe group at some point that held that. I think Shabir Ali even said maybe it was just one person, right? And so notice, wh whether you're talking about this doctrine of the Trinity or, or the claim that Jews uh, believe that Ezra is the son of God, the the author of the Quran clearly didn't know what Jews and Christians believe and so the only way Muslims can defend it is to say well maybe it's just a fringe group and not and not most but yeah why why would your God be focusing on right. groups that we can't even find a record that of, of their existence we can't even find a record of Jews claiming that that Ezra is the son of God so who in the world is your God responding to and why does he <laughs> seem to think that's the majority and and, and 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 notice, Sam. This this this. I always bring this up, but if the Quran ultimately comes from Muhammad, I understand. I understand an illiterate seventh-century caravan robber hearing Christians talk about God the Father, hearing Christians talking about Jesus the Son, and hearing Christians talking about Mary the mother of Jesus. And hearing Christians talk about the Trinity and thinking, oh, the Trinity is God, Jesus, and Mary. Oh, okay, yeah, I get that. So I understand an illiterate 7th century caravan robber making that mistake. I don't understand God making that mistake. And so, mm -hmm. and so it, it's just a situation, one of many, where if the Quran were actually the word of God, if the Quran's actually the word of God, Muslims, you got you you got two possibilities here. Either A, Allah is ignorant. He doesn't know what Christians believe. He doesn't know what Jews believe. Um, so he's ignorant. He's not all-knowing. Or he does know, and he's misrepresenting our positions deliberately, in which case he's immoral. He's he's a deceiver trying to misrepresent our, our positions. He's, he's basically straw-manning. Judaism and Christianity, in which case Precisely. he's he's a deceiver. Now you have to pick one of those. If I were you, I'd go with the deceiver, since he constantly brags about being the best of deceivers. Uh, anyway, hope that helps, Mustafa. Did did you want to add some more, Sam? No, I, I just want people to keep in mind when the Muslim tells you the Quran condemns the Trinity, say, okay, show me where it does. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It actually mentions Allah's a third of three. And by the way, don't take my word for it. Get the study Quran. The study Quran, which is produced by reputable Muslim scholars they will admit in the notes that the Quranic statements about Allah being the third of three do not attack the historic understanding of the Trinity so it's not just my position so member Christians when they say the Quran condemns the Trinity say show it where does it say you are disbelievers for believing that Allah is the Father Son Holy Spirit or Allah Jesus and Holy Spirit are one the Quran doesn't say that this is a lie that Muslims keep parroting thinking that if they say it <clears throat> enough, someone will, will fall for it and believe in it. And unfortunately, most Muslims do fall for it. But anyway, that's it. All right. Um, now let's get into some of these. Now, we, 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 we did title this uh, that Muhammad affirms the Bible. And so we'll want to get into that in, in a few minutes. But uh, we do have Clifford the Big Red Dog here. Clifford the Big Red Dog said, Act 17 Apologetics, I'm not a follower of Prophet Pedo Hamid. But Muslims often use the verse Surah 378 to prove the Bible is false. 
What do you think about it? it? Yeah, um, well, th that's, uh, you know, Sam, ever since I made my video 279 on, on, uh, on Surah 2 verse 79, where I gave 26 reasons that there's no way that's actually talking about the corruption of our book. Exactly. Um, Muslims haven't been using it as much on my channel. The only way they use it on my channel is if they just aren't, aren't familiar with my channel. But the Muslims who used to use it uh, aren't using it again, at, at least on my channel. And now the main one they're using is 378, which is even dumber. It's even dumber. Right. Yeah. yeah, 278, you know, 278, if you ignore the context, you ignore the historical background, you ignore the commentaries, you ignore what it says beforehand, you ignore what it says afterwards, you ignore everything, then you, 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 I see why you would you would think that it's talking about, about you know, the, the Bible being corrupted uh, if you're really trying to force that view in there. 378, I, it's like you can't read words off a page if you say it's talking about the the corruption of the Bible. If you read Surah 378, you say, yep, the text of the Bible has been corrupted. It's like you're, you, you know, you sound illiterate, like your prophet, like you, you can't comprehend 100%. words off a page. So let's go ahead, because I know some of the uh, screenshots I took were, were quoting Surah 3, verse 78 as oh, well. So that came up again? Wow. Nothing oh, no, under the sun, right? Oh, I, told, I, I told you, this, I'm getting this multiple times per day. In in, in, oh, very, yeah, yeah. in in various yeah, videos, so do a video on it. I guess you gotta have to do a video. I on do, it, but right? this one's fun because it's so it's so awesome. And and when you when you when they use this one, you can actually show them that according to what they just said, the Quran's been corrupted. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So do you want are you gonna read the verse or what do you want me to? Uh, you want me to put uh, here? I'll go ahead and uh, put it up on the screen yeah. and then read it, and then you can uh, you can you can comment. Yeah, Let's yeah. See. It's uh, it's ironic because we even addressed it in the previous session just uh, a couple days ago. Three seventy eight is three seventy eight came up, uh, and I addressed it. But see again, this confirms what I've been saying, folks. You're going to have new people hearing these arguments for the first time, or people who may have forgotten the arguments. And repetition is key by the grace of Jesus Christ until you learn these arguments. But in three seventy eight, when you put it up, I can read it or whatever. Yep. If you want to read, it, go ahead. That's I'll up to it. you. Let's I don't, see here. Whoever wants to read. All right, so 378, I have two translations there. I think that's uh, M.H. Shakir and Yusuf Ali. But um, let's read the Shakir here. So, 378. Most surely there is a party. Notice already, it's a party. Yeah. And I don't mean in the in the fun party it's sense. I mean, party. I mean, it's not all of them, it's some of them. Most surely there is a party amongst those who distort the book with their tongue that you may consider it to be part of the book and they say it is from Allah while it is not from Allah and they tell a lie against Allah whilst they know. Now Sam, I see about four or five problems already. Let, let me go ahead and read the Yusuf Ali right there as well. Yeah. Um, so right beside that we have the Yusuf Ali. There is among them a section who distort the book with their tongues. As they read, you would think it is a part of the book. Notice, as they read, there's in parentheses. Uh, so he, he's adding it for clarification. As they read, you would think it is part of the book, but it is no part of the book. And they say that is from God, but it is not from God. It is they who tell a lie against God, and well, they know it. They know it. All right, Sam, what, what problems do you see with, again, guys... Yeah. And Mustafa, you know this by now, uh, everyone who's watching, Sam, Sam just alluded to this, but basically, why do Muslims keep using this? They keep using this because not all Muslims pay attention when we offer a refutation. What needs to happen is everyone needs to learn the refutation, and you, so you, you, those of you who are watching, you need to learn the responses so that when Muslim, when you see Muslims on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, in the comment section of YouTube, wherever, when you see them using this, you can get the response. And the responses, the responses to this are very, 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 very <laughs> simple. And keep in mind, Surah 2, verse 79, you can check out my video on that. Uh, I give 26 reasons. I go through 26 reasons that can't possibly be talking about the corruption of the gospel. That and this one, Surah 3, verse 78, are the most popular. If you learn the responses to just those two, and you don't have to learn 26 responses to uh, to 279, just learn just learn one or two. This one, this one's even easier because all you have to do is read the verse. But Sam, what are you what are your thoughts on 378? Yeah. 
Yeah, and glory to God, some people already saw it with their tongue. Mm -hmm. Did you notice? It's talking about a group. Number one, as David noted, it's a specific group in a specific location at a specific time. One particular group at a particular time at a particular location. One particular group, not everyone under the sun, not everyone before the time of Christ, during the time of Christ, after the time of Christ, before Muhammad, during Ma It's talking about a particular group at a particular time at a particular place. So that even if it's true, let's assume worst case scenario, it's not about corruption of a text. <clears throat> it's not. It would be talking about a particular group corrupting their text. It's not talking about wholesale corruption because as we've noted, even in the video that David made, you have passages such as chapter 3 of the Quran, verses 113 to 114. Chapter 3, verses 113 to 114. There it tells you there are not, they are not all alike because there's a party among the people of the book. A party among the people of the book who do not sell the verses for miserable gain, but fear Allah and believe in his verses and recite them. So the Quran itself says they're not all alike. There are some who are God-fearing, who believe the verses, who won't pervert them for miserable gain, but recite them and believe in them, and they're pleasing to Allah. That's chapter 3, verse 113 and 114, and then you can include 3199. But secondly, that was 3199. Secondly, and more importantly, it tells you how they twisted it, with their tongues. What it means is that either the Jews, which in the context would be a group of Jews, would be reading the scriptures in Hebrew and then explaining it with their tongues in Arabic. And they would explain it in such a way to make it seem like the Old Testament was saying X when in reality it was saying Y. So they were deceiving the Muslims saying, oh yeah, yeah, the Old Testament says this. So they would then misinterpret or falsify what's in the Old Testament, but they didn't touch the text. They didn't change the text. They didn't corrupt the text. In fact, let me read Ibn Kathir, and you can read this online for free. Ibn Kathir's commentary of the Quran is, in a, is now in an abridged translation available online in alim, a -L -I -M org. alim.org. You'll find the abridged English translation of Ibn Kathir's commentary there for free. Chapter 3, verse 78, and it's cited in the articles on our websites. Okay, now, how does he interpret this passage? Chapter 3, verse 78, and by the way, Ibn Kathir believed the corruption of the Bible. He comes about 700 years after the time of Muhammad, and he belonged to a particular group of Muslims who thought the scriptures were corrupt, and only a few nuggets of truth remained, even though he believed that inconsistently. And in this commentary, you'll see why he believes that. He goes, if you look at the extent Arabic versions, he says that, they are contradictory. So he's basing his belief in the corruption of the Bible on the extent, extent Arabic translations of the Bible that they're not uniform. Well, if he's going to play that game, we can do that with the English versions of the Quran. They're not uniform either. Does that mean they're corrupt? But it gets worse for Ibn Kathir because the Arabic Qurans are not uniform. The Qirat are not uniform. And thanks to our friend Yasser Qadi, there are holes in the narrative. Holes in the narrative. Right, anyway, now, here's Ibn Kathir's Exposition. Guys, Christians, listen to how he explains this verse. Mujahid al Shabbi al Hassan Katada al Rabbi bin Anas said that who distort the book with their tongues means they alter Allah's words. Now, notice who Ibn Kathir quotes. Mustafa, I hope you're listening. Al Bukhari. Who? Al Bukhari, the greatest collector of hadiths in Islamic history. Al-Bukhari, the one who compiled Sahih Al-Bukhari. Al-Bukhari reported that Ibn Abbas, who? Ibn Abbas, who is he? Muhammad's first cousin, a companion whom Muhammad prayed that Allah would make him quite knowledgeable. Al-Bukhari reported that Ibn Abbas said that the ayah means they alter and add, although none among Allah's creation can remove the words of Allah from his books. Let me repeat it again so it can sink in. Although none among Allah's creation can remove the words of Allah from his books, they alter and distort their apparent meanings. So that's what al-Bukhari, he mentions Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas, and some say this was Bukhari's opinion. Nobody can corrupt the books. 
They alter the meaning, but not the text. Okay? This comes from your highest authority in, in terms of hadith collection. But then, Ibn Kathir quotes someone else. Wahab, Wahab bin Munabba. Wahab bin Munabba is a Jewish convert to Islam. He was a companion of Muhammad's companions. Wahab bin Munabba said, The Torah and Injil remain as Allah revealed them. I got to say that again. The Torah and Injil remain as Allah revealed them. And no letter in them was removed. No letter in them was removed. However, the people misguide others by addition and false interpretation, relying on books that they wrote themselves, meaning like the Talmud. Yes, they did write books like the Talmud, but the Torah and Jeel, no one has removed a single word from them. They remain as Allah revealed them. According to who? David Wood? Wahab bin Munabbi. Okay? They said, this is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. As for Allah's books, they are still preserved and cannot be changed. I got I to gotta repeat that again. As for Allah's books, they are still preserved and cannot be changed. Ibn Abi Hatim recorded the statement. What else do you want, David? Yeah. Um, so let, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and read through this verse one more time here. And again, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget this is the most popular Quran verse to go to to show that the Quran does affirm the corruption of the text of the Bible apart from Surah 2, verse 79, right? 2, verse 79. Um, again, 378 is what I get most frequently now. In the past, I've seen 279, Surah 2, verse 79, most frequently. But think about it. We say, hey, you've got all these verses in the Quran talking about the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the scriptures in the possession of Jews and Christians. We know what the scriptures in the possession of Jews and Christians are. So your book is affirming our book. How is this not a problem? And the response is, no, you liars, you Islamophobes, you bigots. Ha ha, the Quran does affirm the corruption of your text. So many places, so many verses, it's all over the place. We say, just give us one, give us your best one. And <laughs> what do they give us? Yeah. Surah 3, verse 78. Most surely, there is a party amongst those who distort the book with their tongue. They distort the book with their tongue that you may consider it to be part of the book. So notice, people are saying something, and they're claiming that it's, they're acting like it's part of the book when it's not part of the book. What's that mean? Well, it means there's a book and this stuff is not in it, right? So however these people are distorting with their tongue, it's not actually in the book. The book is still there. And watch, you can confirm it. And they say it is from Allah, while it is not from Allah, and they tell a lie against Allah, whilst they know. Now, now Sam, if this is talking about the corruption of the book, which supposedly took place centuries earlier, how would they know? How would they know that it's? How would they know that that they're dis, being deceptive with their exactly. tongues? Exactly. Notice yeah. this assumes. What guys? Do you do you see what I'm talking about? R read the read the end of 378. They tell a lie against Allah whilst they know. These are people who have a book. They're they're acting as if the things they're saying are in the book when they're not in the book. So the things these people are saying are not in the book and they know it. How do, what does this have to do with the corruption of the book? If the, if the book itself were corrupt and they're just quoting a corrupt book, they wouldn't know they're reading, they wouldn't know they're reading a corrupt book. They wouldn't know they're lying, right? So, uh, so you, you put all of these things together and then ju just think about this, ladies and gentlemen, think about what this is really saying. Most surely there's, there's a party. There's a certain group who distort the book with their tongue. They distort the book with their tongue. Does distorting a book with your tongue mean that the book itself, the text, the physical text, has been corrupted? Of course not. But notice, Muslims want to say yes. They want to say, nope. If someone is distorting this book with his tongue, then by golly, alhamdulillah, the book itself has been corrupted. Okay, well, let, let me just ask, Muslims. Um, here's a Quran. Are there... Have there ever been Muslims who distorted this book with their speech? Has there ever been a Muslim who distorted the Quran with his speech? Of course there has, right? Every time you guys say <laughs> that, oh, this verse says the Bible's been corrupted, you're doing it. You're doing what you... 
<laughs> That's the great irony of 378, Sam. Exactly. The Muslims who say, ah, oh, 378 affirms the corruption of the text, they're distorting their own book. And if they think that distorting something with your speech means that the text has been corrupted, then great, the text of the Quran has been corrupted, right? You Muslims who are watching, I'm sure you know a group of Muslims that you believe distorts the Quran. And you have to, other because these groups contradict each other, right? So you have Sunnis and Shias both 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 quoting this book. You have to believe some of them are getting some things wrong with their speech, right? If you're a peaceful Muslim, you obviously think that ISIS is misrepresenting your book. In fact, Sam, that's one of the what's one of the biggest things that we hear about in the West is how uh, radical Muslims have hijacked this book and distorted its meaning. Well, guess what? If distorting the meaning with your speech and with your preaching means that the text has been corrupted, you've got the most corrupt book in the history of humanity. But suddenly, Sam, if I say, hey. ISIS, ISIS says things about your book that you disagree with. How do you respond? Oh, they're misrepresenting it with their preaching. Okay, well, that means your book's been corrupted, right? Suddenly, yeah. their, suddenly their reasoning ability will kick in. No, them preaching something doesn't mean that the text has been corrupted. That's absurd, David. That's completely idiotic. And yet all of their top apologists go to 378 and say, oh, it says people are... Uh, are, are distorting the book with their tongue that means the text has been corrupted so what does this mean ladies and gentlemen your apologists they've read that verse they've seen the responses they know for a fact that surah 3 verse 78 does absolutely nothing to condemn the text the book that we have they know it they say it anyway why because they have nothing else and so notice what they're doing there they know that the Quran affirms our book. And they're lying to their followers to make them think that the Quran condemns our book. Oh. What? And this, this is the heart of Islamic apologetics. This is some amazing stuff here, man. This is some amazing Let me stuff. Add, I'm, I'm going to add two points to confirm that if they're consistent, like you said, then they're going to have to say the Quran is corrupted. They need to trash the Quran because the very language used of what the Jews and Christians did about their scripture is applied to what was done to the Quran, and in one place it's even more, more explicit. In fact, if you want to bring up that one particular one, chapter 15, verses 90 to 91, because I'm going to read something mm -hmm. else. So if you want to bring up, and I want guys to note the reference, Surah Al-Hijr, chapter 15, verses 90 to 91, where they tore the Quran into shreds. So if you want to bring that up, I'm going to read this one, though, first. So guys, write 15, 90 to 91, and I want Mustafa and everyone to hear Chapter 4 of the Quran, Surah the nisa because that's what I'm going to read from Pikthal. Chapter 4, verses 44 to 46, but I'm going to include 47 as well. So write down chapter 4, verses 44 to 46, and then we'll read verse 47. Now, remember the argument. Because they twisted the book with their tongue. Tongues, that means they corrupted the book. Okay, now watch this, folks. Chapter 4, verses 44, 46, talking about a group of Jews at the time of Muhammad twisting the words from Muhammad's mouth, meaning the revelation, so-called the Quran. Now, notice what it says. Hast thou not turned thy vision to those who are given a portion of the book? That's the Jews. They're given a portion of the book. They traffic in error and wish that ye should lose the right path. But Allah hath full knowledge of your enemies. Allah is enough for a protector and Allah is enough for a helper. Now, guys... Notice what these Jews did with Muhammad's words when he'd recite the Quran to them and give his explanation. Chapter 4, verse 46. Of the Jews, there are those who displace words from their right places and say, We hear and we disobey, and we hear what is not heard, and re'inna, with a twist of their tongues and a slander to faith. If only they had said, We hear and we obey, and do, and do hear and do look at us, it would have been better for them and more proper but Allah hath cursed them for their unbelief, and but few of them will believe. So the, the Jews would mock Muhammad, saying, We hear and disobey. They would twist the Arabic in such a way that if you weren't paying attention, you think they're saying, We hear and obey. We hear and disobey, right? Hear what is not heard. Renna. So they were playing with Muhammad, twisting his words, twisting what they were saying to him. And the Quran says, Only if they said, We hear and obey and pay attention to us. So if I apply the logic of the Muslims, if I apply their logic, since the Jews would twist what they heard from Muhammad 
and twist the Arabic in such a way to deceive Muhammad into hearing something that they were not really saying. That means not only are the scriptures of the Jews corrupt, but they also corrupted Muhammad's hadith and the Quran because they were twisting everything in sight. But then now notice first chapter 4, verse 47. Right after saying this, this is what the Jews are told. 447, O oh, you people of the book, believe in what we have now revealed, meaning the Quran, confirming what is with you. This Quran confirms what you have, so why don't you believe in it? It's saying what you have in your possession right now, Ta'i Muhammad, it is the truth from God. Irony of ironies, whereas they're twisting Muhammad's words, twisting what they hear from him, twisting their own words in Arabic to confuse Muhammad, that same context says the Quran confirms what you have, so believe in the Quran because it says what you have is the truth. But what they have, which is the truth according to the Quran, contradicts the Quran, proving Muhammad is a fraud. Irony of ironies. But what does 1590-91 say? More hilarious stuff. <laughs> Uh, so, so did, did, did you guys catch that, by the way? According to the Quran, people distort the Quran with their tongues. Right? So people, people distort the meaning of the Quran. Well, according to Muslim apologists, if you distort the meaning of a book, then the book has been corrupted. Once again, suddenly their, their, their reasoning ability will turn on and they'll say, no, just because someone's distorting it with their speech, that has nothing to do with the text being corrupted. And then, it is, and then they'll suddenly forget that when you say, well, where does the Quran say that the Bible's been corrupted? 378! 378! It says, they, it says they alter it with their speech. This means that the text has been corrupted. <laughs> what is this religion, man? What, is this, what does this do to people? All right. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The moment you've all been waiting for. Uh, once again, we have the uh, M.H. Shakir translation side by side with the Yusuf Ali. Surah 15, verses 90 to 91. Like as we sent down on the dividers, those who made the Quran into shreds. Oh my goodness. Those who made the Quran into shreds. And uh, beside that, we have the use of Ali. Of just such wrath as we sent down on those who divide scripture into arbitrary parts, so also on such as we have, so also on such as have made the Quran into shreds as they please now sam you, we've pointed out numerous times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if the quran here if the quran here had said that the gospel was made into shreds or that Boy. the torah was made into shreds every muslim on the planet when we ask hey where does the quran say the bible's been corrupted they would point to this verse and say right here it says your book was shredded made into shreds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this this is the proof <laughs> Instead, yeah. instead, <laughs> instead, it says that the Quran has been made into shreds. The Quran was shredded. Or if you go, I think it's the Palmer translation, which says uh, it's been yes. dismembered. Yes, it's dismembered. been dismembered. Yeah. And so, Muslims, what is this saying about the preservation of your text? It's saying nothing about preservation. No, no, it, it simply means that some people were, uh, were, were, were changing the meaning or altering the meaning or misinterpreting some things or dividing up the scripture or something like that. Wait a minute. According to 378 and in the interpretation of your apologist, doesn't that also mean that the Quran itself has been corrupted? No. Guys, why do the rules change every five seconds for what the Quran means? Every, I mean, you could go verse by verse. You say, what's the rule here? The rule is that if, if, someone, if someone misrepresents a text with his speech, the book has been corrupted. Oh, okay, but according to, according to the Quran, people, people distort the Quran with their speech. So the Quran's been corrupted. No, just because someone distorts the, a book with their speech doesn't mean that the book has been corrupted. Stop being stupid. And the, the, it will we'll just it, we can go right down the line, and the rules just keep changing. Um, it, we we even saw this. We even saw this when uh, someone was it Mustafa. Someone brought up two seventy nine, two days ago, and there the rule there in two seventy nine it says uh, it says uh, you know they write the book claiming that it's from God. They write the book claiming it's from God, and this supposedly means it's been it's been corrupted. And I say, wait a minute, I'll 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 write right now. I'll write now. I'll write something that I claim is the Quran. Does that mean the Quran's been corrupted? No, no, not a bit. The rules just keep changing. Guys, oh, guys, that should tell you something. 
If you cannot defend a position without changing the rules 50 times to force your own understanding into your book, guess what? Maybe your book ain't saying what you think it's saying. 100%. Maybe you need, a, maybe you need a new book. Go ahead, Sam. I just, I just posted the Palmer in the comment section. It says, who dismember the Quran? Palmer <laughs> translation, who dismember the Quran? Who dismember the Quran? Muslims would salivate if this said it about the gospel yep. or the Torah. That'd be ball game so, for them. Yeah, they would be salivating. Mm. Allah Akbar, we mm. got the, the Kufar. All right, yeah, mm -hmm. but glory to Jesus. The false Quran, as false as it is, does not say that about the Bible. But yep. anyway. A um, couple okay. comments here. Uh, walking Live. Walking Live said, uh, Thanks, Sam and David. Learning new argument every day. I am worried that your platform will be taken down. Do you have a plan? Yes, it's always a concern that a platform will be taken down. Uh, one thing I'm going to be working on in the near future is, uh, yes, being on multiple platforms, even on YouTube, having multiple active channels. Like Abdullah Samir, his, uh, he's not allowed to post for a while now because of strikes. And so, really? uh, yeah. Oh, my. Okay. Yeah, it's and coming. so yeah, and so basically, um, the more scared <laughs> Muslim apologists get, the more they tell their followers to harass YouTube's with complaints about us. And guess what? YouTube does sometimes uh, go along with it, go with the flow, and take our stuff down. So yes, it is a concern. But uh, I told Abdullah, I think the best bet is to have multiple active channels, so that you know, if you get banned on one channel for a couple weeks or permanently or something like that, you have, you have some other channels to fall back on. And, you know, apart from that, there are other platforms. So if things get especially bad, we always have, uh, you know, we always have other platforms if we, uh, if we need them. But, uh, the, the main, the main plan is to blow up so big, to blow up so big that it makes it hard. It makes it, it makes it hurt for YouTube to take you down, right? If you, if you, if you've got two, three million subscribers, YouTube really doesn't want to ban you because they don't want your subscribers following you elsewhere. They just, it's, it's just bad for business. So the best, the best defense for people who are criticizing Islam is to have big channels with lots of, lots of people watching. Um, one more here, Sam, right. one more comment here. Mirage007-2004 said, If Islam is false by virtue of not having any evidence for its truthfulness, that's not why I would say Islam is false. Um, uh, Islam is false because there are multiple arguments that show that it's false. It's not just absence of evidence. It's that you have positive evidence against it. Um, and you combine that with the fact that there's no evidence for it. Um, but... Uh, We'll set that aside. He says, if Islam is false by virtue of not having any evidence for its truthfulness, then why should one worry about the claims it makes about the Bible? Why dignify it with a response? Um, yeah, I'll give a short answer and Sam, you can expand upon yeah. it. But but Mirage, it's not because we believe in the Quran or we think or we would. I mean, my goodness, how, how much how much do you think we respect the Quran here? How much do you think we respect the Quran here? No, you have. You have 1.6, 1.8 billion Muslims in the world who believe that book and who think that our book has been corrupted. They can't. They, they if they if they understood their book, they would realize they can't hold both. Either they have to drop their book, or they have to drop the belief that our book has been corrupted. They have to do one or the other, right? We want to put them in that situation because what you're saying is, hey, there are all these Muslims walking around with with. They don't realize what their book says because they've listened to their leaders who lie to them. And you shouldn't show them that their leaders have lied to them about about the Bible. You shouldn't show them that. What are you talking about? Why would that? Yeah, why would that? Yeah. Why would that not be relevant? And, and 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 apart from that, we believe this is at least one of the best arguments against Islam. That since the Quran affirms our scriptures and contradicts our scriptures, Islam self destructs. So basically, you're saying, why would we want to point out the fact that Islam self destructs? Well, yeah. I think we have good reasons. Well, what are your thoughts on this, Sam? Yeah, biblically, we are commanded to make disciples of all nations. That's Matthew 28, 19 to 20. And in that context, we're going to encounter cultures, worldviews that oppose Christianity and want to destroy our Christian witness and also take believers from our midst and cause them to turn away from the true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So as a Christian, I didn't go looking for Islam. Islam came looking for me. And as a Christian... I'm commanded by my scripture. So I'm assuming the person who's asking a question is coming from a Christian perspective. Even if he's not, 
for the Christians, I want you to hear these passages. I'm going to give you three passages. Whether we like it or not, in season, out of season, whether we feel like it, it is for the glory and honor of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's worthy that we do everything we can to love him and praise him and honor him, even if that means dying for him, because he's worthy, because our life is Christ and it's hidden in Christ. Here, just three passages, why we do this. Let me repeat, Islam came looking for us. Islam came attacking the Christian faith. Islam came attacking the Bible. We didn't look for Islam. And that's true with me as an individual. Muslims came attacking my faith, desecrating my scriptures, blaspheming my Lord, leaving me no choice but to seek answers. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 6. I want Christians to listen to the, the militant nature of this passage because we are in warfare. It is a battle, but it's spiritual. It's not physical like the Muslims. We don't behead people. We don't take their women captive and rape them like Muhammad and his companions. It is spiritual warfare with spiritual weapons supplied by the Spirit that are indestructible. 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, 2 Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 6, we do not war according to the flesh. We don't fight like Muslims do with weapons <clears throat> you know, that are physical. For the weapons of our warfare, guys, we're in warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, physical, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments. Well, the Muslims are setting arguments to dethrone King Jesus, and that will never happen. So we cast down their arguments, we demolish their arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, like Muhammad and his fake Quran, exalting themselves against the true knowledge of God in Jesus Christ, right? We bring it down, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Well, the only time the obedience of the believer will be fulfilled is when Jesus returns and glorifies us. So this will take place at the day of judgment. So that's the first passage. Two more. 1 Peter 3, 14 and 15. 1 Peter 3, 14 and 15. But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats. That's why David is not afraid. Muslims trying to kill him? Bring it on. You see the wisdom of God in raising up a sociopath for the glory of Jesus? He laughs when you threaten him. Oh, yeah? Oh, I'm scared. I'm going to put more holes in your Quran, and I'm going to have another sheet of Quran with my pancakes. So it doesn't work. See, that's why it says, do not be afraid of their threats. And in Jesus' name, may we never fear their bullying tactics, nor be troubled, but sanctify the Lord God. Sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Set apart in your hearts that Jesus is the sovereign Lord, the risen Lord, who is almighty over creation. Your life is in his hands, not in the hands of the Muslims or anyone else. And always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and reverence and fear. Let me repeat, always be ready, not whether you like it or not, always be ready to give a defense. Now, for those of you who love Greek, because the New Testament is written in Greek, the words give a defense is pros. Apologion, pros towards Apologion. Does that sound familiar? Apologion, Apologia, Apologia, Apologetics. The very word Apologetics comes from this very Greek word that Peter used by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So Peter is saying, Christians, always be ready to be an apologist, doing apologetics for the glory of Christ. You need to be apologists. That's an inspired command given through Peter by the Holy Spirit. That was 1 Peter 3, 14, 15. And then finally, 1 Peter 3, 14, 15. And finally, Jude 1, verse 3. Jude 1, verse 3. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, to talk about the salvation we share in common, the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ bestowed on all of us. That's what I wanted to write about. But I had a change of mind. Why? I found it necessary to write to exhort you to contend. See, that's the language of fighting, but it's spiritual fighting. It's spiritual warfare. It's spiritual boxing. Contend earnestly, zealously for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. So now, David, help me understand. If Jude says, be ready to contend, to protect the faith and guard it to the trust of the believers, doesn't that sound like, whether we like it or not, we have to answer Muslims when they attack? Yeah. But as soon as you do, why are you dignifying this with a response? <laughs> okay. uh, like you're a, man, you got to do a character for uh, boom boom boom. <laughs> I love that. Ooh, yeah. I like that man, and with the hat too. 
All right, now um, I I do not know what Halal Bart was asking. Uh, it's weird if we're sitting here um, answering questions and so on, and someone asks something and we don't respond. You see, he's running from me <laughs> because of the power. We're sitting there. We're sitting there basically begging Muslims to answer us, to give us, to show us where the Quran says that our book's been corrupted. Um, I mean, think, Sam, how, how many month, for how many months have you been challenging Muslims to debate you on this topic? No one wanted to take us up on the debate challenge, not Muhammad Hijab, not any of these guys. No one wanted to come near this. So we say, okay, instead of a debate, we'll, we'll just have a friendly discussion. You guys can call in. You can call in, start bringing up verses, explaining how the verses show that the Bible's been corrupted. Uh, and they won't even do that. They won't even do that. They be, they're 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 extremely brave in the comments section to say some things, but uh, but that that's that's about the extent of it. Oh, so anyway, Halal Bart says that he's been asking a question. If it now if it's on a completely different topic, then you know, yeah. not interested. We you we have a topic, yeah, but right now, Halal Bart, Halal Bart, now's your chance. And Mustafa, any. Of you other Muslims who are watching right now, we're going to ask you, and if you cannot give give us a single verse of the Quran that suggests that our Bible has been corrupted, if you can't give us one, we can only assume that you just have none, and that you're basically admitting that you believe something that is completely refuted by your own book. You believe the Bible's been corrupted when your book says the exact opposite. In which case, you have no respect for Allah. You have no respect for Muhammad. You are not true Muslims, according to Surah 4, verse 65 of the Quran. You should be ashamed of yourselves. You're actually apostates. Yeah. Well, Halal Bart answered you. I'm okay. a kid. I can't call in, mister. I'm a kid. I can't call in, That makes in, sense. Mister. Yeah. And by the way, they have a new condition now. Now they know the cowards. We have an open challenge. We'll debate them anytime live, bring in all. Now they say, no, they want it face to face. We have to be in person face to face in spite of COVID-19 and all these restrictions. You see this? Yeah. The stuff they come up with yeah. to make excuses? I mean, my goodness, the, the, the whole world's got COVID. We could have spent this entire COVID journey having nightly debates. Everyone's stuck at home. What are you gonna do? Watch debates. And they don't want to. They don't want to come near it. They don't want to come. No, only in person. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. You me that character, man. Now, 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 think about this. I just told. I just told. Halal Bart will give him this opportunity. Now, ask your question. Give us your question. So, and 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 Mustafa, any of the Muslims, any of the Muslims right now, who are watching right now, show us. Show us where your book, tell us, chapter and verse, show us where your book says that the Bible's been corrupted. Show us where it says that the Torah's been corrupted, where the gospel's been corrupted. Show us. We want to see it. We want to see it. If you can't, then, if you can't, then we'll, uh, you know, again, I, I do have some, uh, some comments that I saved. I took screenshots of. Uh, I'm in Chowdhury. If you're a Muslim and you want to defend your uh, your position on this, let me know, and I'll give you my email address and send me your Skype info, and I would uh, I would call you on Skype. Yep. It's not the original Ajam Chowdhury we debated, right? No. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's right. a, it's He's Ayman Chow. That's Ayman Chowdhury. Oh, I thought you said Anjam. All right. You okay. well, don't I, even know anything. I'm a literate. <laughs> I'm a buffoon. What do you expect? All right, guys, are we getting any response from Mustafa? Because, I mean, guys, think about this. Yeah, guys, think, think. I mean, it's just amazing how patient we are. Right? Muslims say, here's our position. It's the foundation of Islamic apologetics towards Christianity. Your book has been corrupted, and we'll show it. Oh! We say, show us, show us one verse where your God thinks that or where your prophet thinks that, because your God and your prophet say the opposite. And the response, no, no debates, no discussions. Um, uh, 279, oh, that doesn't work. Then 378, oh, that doesn't work. And oh, both both those verses would mean that the Quran's been corrupted. Oh, uh, well, you know, the, what about the Trinity, right? And my goodness, this is this is Islam. You do a sitcom, what you do. This is you Islamic. Do a sitcom for all these characters, dude. This is Islamic apologetics, man. Uh, okay. Yeah, hey, I should I should start up uh I should start up YouTube channels of all my alter egos. Yeah, man, that'd be phenomenal. 
Guys, um, this is it. We had a week. He gave advance notice. Bring the bo- best Muslim scholars. Notice. We didn't even do a show every day because of the lack of <clears throat> challengers. So no one can say that we haven't put up an open challenge because we're going to do more open challenges and related to even Christian topics. And yet every time they try to show up, they fail miserably because glory to Jesus, we have the truth. And here with this topic, we had no takers, only people in the comment section. Or yeah, that's about it. Wow. Unbelievable. Yeah. I Unbelievable, mean, folks. So it's not our fault. We're looking. Bring your top guys. But anyway, it, it is what it is. We have the truth. Glory to Jesus Christ. But you said they gave uh, you some in the comment section, huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not not even the chat here. I'm in the comment section of my videos. I saw some and I took. Uh, do you want to answer Halal Bart? He went completely off hey, topic. So yeah, notice, notice, I ladies and gentlemen. Notice, ladies and gentlemen. We post the topic ahead of time. We, I announced last week what we'd be discussing so that Muslims have no excuse. They can they can do their research and be ready. We go live. We go live. We say, now's your chance. Give us the verses of the Quran that say that our book's been corrupted. And what do they do? They change the subject. Hmm, I'm and, shocked. And, and, I, and I even slow down because because Halal Bart's, oh, he's not answering me. He's not answering me, man. He's not answering me. Yeah. And then I said, and then I stop everything. Okay, give us your question. What is it? Show us. And then here you have it, Sam. Ready? What is it, bro? Halal yeah, Bart yeah. said, I'm we're, Halal Bart said, we're Jesus and the Father always in the universe. Yes or no? After your answers, I want to give a short reaction to you both. Well, apparently, ha- apparently, mean? halal. Yeah, I can't even figure out what he means. Yeah. Um, but uh, notice, we can only assume. Once again, guys, and th- this is for all of you viewers. Twelve hundred fifty people watching right now. Notice, every Muslim you'll run into will say, "Yes, the Bible's been corrupted. Yes, the Quran affirms it." And if you say, "Well, show me where," they'll give you a couple of verses. They'll give you a couple of verses. But they're assuming that you're not going to actually read the verses carefully, read the context, read the rest of what it says, read the commentaries. In other words, it's a very superficial reading. And if it's a Muslim who actually knows what these verses mean, he's actually trying to deceive you. It's a, if it's a Muslim apologist, he knows he's lying. It, Adnan Rashid knows he's lying. He knows he's lying when he makes these videos. He can't possibly be serious about what he's saying. Right? So... When we actually say, guys, you have this belief, it's shared by Muslims around the world, we're saying, we're saying that your belief that you claim, that this thing that you believe, completely contradicts what your God and your prophets say. And we're going to give you the opportunity to show us a single verse that agrees with your position. Just one, just one, show us one. Yeah. And they can't do it. And we sit here night after night, giving them all the opportunity in the world to prepare. We sit down. Guys, give us your verses. And what's the response? Were Jesus and the Father always in the universe? Ha ha! Yes or no? What is, what is this religion, man? What is this religion, dude? All right, Sam, yeah. would you like yeah. to respond to this? Yeah. yeah. Even the question, the way he formulated it, because he said he's young, so it's kind of incoherent. Mm-hmm. When you say in the universe... I guess he's, uh, I'm going to take a shot because he said he's young. He didn't formulate it properly. Uh, He means, did Jesus, the son, always exist with the father, I guess, from the time of creation and onwards? Because in the universe, obviously, we don't believe that God is a part of the universe, though God oversees creation and creation is present before him because he's sustaining it. So in that sense, he's omnipresent. So I'm going to take a stab. I'm going to assume he means, was Jesus there with the Father from the start of creation and onwards? Yes. So Jesus, the Son, the Word, has always existed with the Father and the Spirit before creation. But then later, after creation, at a specific moment in time, he then entered into his creation to take on a human nature from his blessed mother while she was a virgin by the power of the Holy Spirit, which even the Quran agrees. But let me give some verses for that. So I'm taking a stab. I'm thinking he's saying, was Jesus there with the Father before creation and after was created? Yeah, here. Where did Jesus come from to enter the world? The world. Where did he come from to enter the world? John 3, 13. I'm just going to read the words of our Lord from the Gospel of John. John 3, 13. No one has ascended to heaven, 
but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. So Jesus is saying, I came out of heaven, my Father's heavenly presence, into the world, and being God, he's still present in heaven and earth. As God, he's omnipresent. So though physically on earth, as God, he's overseeing heaven and earth. That's what he says. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, who is in heaven. John 3, 13. John 6, 38 to 42. Our Lord speaking again, and how the Jews understood the Lord, and he didn't correct them. John 6, 38 to 42. For I have come down from heaven. Where? From heaven. So I don't originate from the earth. I didn't originate from Mary's womb. I came down from heaven and entered the womb of my mother, which the Quran in 4171 agrees. But that's another topic. For I've come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me. So Jesus is not the Father. He came down from the Father to do the Father's will. And here's the Father's will for me, his son that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. I want every Muslim, Halal Bart, even Christians to listen to this claim. Jesus says, I will raise up all believers entrusted to me at the last day. I will resurrect them physically and preserve them at the last day. Even the Quran admits this is something that only God does. Notice again, I will raise it up at the last day. Verse 40, this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So my challenge to Halal Bart and every other Muslim, show me a single verse in the Bible, even your Quran, where a creature who fears God speaks this way and says, I, at the last day, I will resurrect believers, I will raise believers alive and make them immortal. No creature says that, but Jesus, the Son of God, says that. And how did the Jews understand? John 6, 41, 42. The Jews then complained about him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he says, I have come down from heaven? So they understood. He's claiming to have personally existed in heaven and came down from there. But that makes no sense because we know his parents. Ironically, in saying that, they show they don't know who Jesus is because Joseph wasn't his biological father, even though that's what they thought. Two more references for the sake of time. John 6, 62, our Lord again speaking. John 6, 62. What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? I will return and ascend to where I came from. I came from the Father out of heaven into the world. I'm leaving the world and going to the Father. And that's confirmed in John 16. John 16, 25 to 31, where our Lord is speaking again, but for the sake of time, John 17, verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself alongside of you with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Before the creation of the world, I was there with you, Father, side by side with the Father in the same glory. And I set it aside, and I'm going back to be alongside the Father in that same glory, because John 17, 24 says, you loved me before the world began. All right, I hope that answered the question. All right, and Eamon, uh, Eamon uh, Pat Chowdhury posted a couple comments because I asked him uh, if he wanted to defend his position on this. Um, but he said here, I just want some answers because I have left Islam. So he actually has some questions about Christianity. So, uh, Ayman, if you want to have a discussion about Christianity, um, we can actually set that up. And Sam, I'm sure Sam would be happy to do sure. that on his channel, or we could do exactly. it here. So anywhere, anywhere, you set it up. Yeah, you let me know. If you yeah, want you can. You or me. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, you can send me a message, and I'd be happy to uh, be happy to have you have you on here with uh, with both of us. Uh, you can let us know what what you want to do and all right so Sam guys uh, AZ creator are you a Muslim or are you a non-muslim who's um, who's posting some of the answers that Muslims give because you'd like to hear our, our response either one either one is fine I'm just uh um, you've posted some verses you've posted some verses asking for responses and so I'm just interested in whether you're you're, you're a Muslim asking or if you would just like to know how we would respond to uh, to some of these. So uh, AZ Creator here, Sam, says, uh, Quran 513, 
What do you think about that? Oh uh, boy, yeah. five yeah. thirteen. Also, yeah, it's, up, yeah. it's not it's not as common as two seventy nine uh, or three seventy eight, but still uh, does tend to come up. Yep. So what do you think? I can actually put yeah, I yeah. can actually yeah, put these verses up on the screen. So, yeah, because if you want to put it up so that they can understand what he's talking about. Right. So before I comment, just let them see what the verse is. It's about forgetting okay. mm -hmm. a part of it. Right. So just yeah, 513 as well as 15. They usually quote. But OK, let them let them come. Folks will post it. So we'll, we'll discuss it. All right. So here we have uh, Surah 5, verse 13. Again, I have the um, Yusuf Ali on the right and the M.H. Shakir on the left. Uh, 513. But on account of their breaking their covenant, we cursed them and made their hearts hard. They altered the word. There you have it, Sam. They altered the words from their places. Yeah. That means uh, the book's been corrupted. They altered the words from their places, and they neglected a portion of what they were reminded of. And you shall always discover treachery in them, excepting a few of them. So pardon them and turn away. Surely Allah loves those who do good. Uh, since uh, some Muslims bring up 14 and 15, should we read all the way 14 and 15? Yeah, you can all the way read from yeah, 14 yeah. and 15 as well, so they can get the context here. All right, and with those who say we are Christians, we made a covenant, but they neglected a portion of what they were reminded of. This will be pointed out to say, yep, yep, that means the Bible, that means that the gospel's been corrupted. And notice notice the parallel. Yeah. They neglected a portion of what they were reminded of. Oh, that means it's been corrupted. Well, wait a minute. Are, exactly. there, are there Muslims who neglect a portion of what they're reminded of? Yes. Does that mean the Quran's been corrupted? Yeah. Uh, I mean, no. Uh, but they neglected a portion of what they were reminded of. Therefore, we excited among them enmity and hatred to the day of resurrection, and Allah will inform them of what they did. O followers of the book, indeed our apostle has come to you, making clear to you much of what you concealed of the book, and passing over much. Indeed, there has come to you light and a clear book from Allah. So, Sam, how do you ignore yep. the fact that this completely destroys your beliefs about the Bible? Yeah, and keep these verses up so people can read carefully because, again, it's sad. It really is sad that we Christians have to show Muslims how to read their book properly. I really don't want to help them understand the Quran. I want them to come to the Bible and hear the true gospel of Jesus Christ. But be that as it may, even let's start with 15. Let's work our way up. Guys, pay attention. It says that Muhammad, who's supposedly the apostle, <clears throat> came to them to make clear what they concealed of the book. How do you conceal something that you don't have, David? Can you help me understand? How do you pass over what's not there? Notice what it says. He came to make clear that which you concealed of the book and passed over much. So, Dave, again, I'm not, remember, I'm not a logician. You study philosophy logic. How are you able to conceal something and pass over something if you don't have that something? Well, if you're concealing it, that mean, kind of means you have it there. <laughs> you sure? Maybe you and me both don't know logic. You positive? Yes. I mean, it seems like, I mean, if I say I'm going to conceal this cup, it kind of means that I still have access to the cup that I'm concealing, right? Okay. So I just wanted to make sure. Remember, I'm not the logician. Now let's go to 14. Let's walk up, up back. We're going to go 15, 14, 15, uh, 13. And 14, and with those who say we are Christians, note verse 13 is not about Christians. Because in verse 14, it's addressing Christians. That means 13 has to be Jews. Keep that in mind. And with those who say we are Christians, we made a covenant, but they neglected a portion of what they were reminded of. How, again, David, could they be reminded of a portion that they neglected if they didn't know what that portion was and didn't have access to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of hard. So everyone getting it? The verses themselves presuppose that these books are there in pure, uncorrupt form. And the guilt of the Christians were that they were ignoring those parts, overlooking those parts, passing over those parts. But the parts were there, and Muhammad saying, wait, hold on. What about that, that part in your gospel? Why are you ignoring that? So, ironically, chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, actually assume that the books of the Christians are uncorrupt, pure and preserved, and their guilt was to ignore the commands in those scriptures that they didn't like and pass over them. So it's ironic that they think these passages prove biblical corruption. Well, what about 13? Okay, let's go with it. Don't forget that verse 13 is not about the Christians. How do we know? Because 14 says, and with those who say we are Christians. So then 13 has to be about the Jews, especially when it says breaking their covenant. But on account of their breaking their covenant, we cursed them and made their hearts hard. They altered the words from their places, and they neglected a portion of what they were reminded of. 
and you should always discover treachery in them, accepting a few of them. So again, worst case scenario, this is talking about the Jews, altering words of their books. So let's assume, worst case scenario, the Jews corrupted their scriptures. But that wouldn't mean the Christians did. So even though the Jews at the time of Muhammad may have corrupted their scriptures, the scriptures of the Jews were no longer in their possession alone. Those scriptures were also being copied and read by Christians. And it's not talking about all Jews of all time. How do I know? Let's read it again. I hope you're paying attention. But on account of their breaking their covenant, we cursed them and made their hearts hard. They altered the words from their places. They neglected a portion of what they were reminded of. And you shall always discover treachery in them. You, Muhammad, will discover treachery in them. So it's obviously talking about, quote-unquote, the treacherous Jews at the time of Muhammad. So at best, all you're proving is the Jews corrupted their scriptures, and not all Jews in all times, a specific group that were interacting with Muhammad corrupted their scriptures. And yet Christians also had those scriptures, and nothing is said in 14 and 15 about Christians corrupting their scriptures. I don't know how this proves your case, but that assumes... Your reading is true. Altering their words from the right places. Altering their words is easily explained by the passage in 378. How do they alter their words from the right places? Not by changing the text, but by taking the statements of the Bible out of their context, misinterpreting them, misapplying them. And to further prove, to further prove that these verses are not saying Jews and Christians were corrupting the texts. The same chapter, chapter 5, verses 43, 48. Uh, Dave, I'll read it here. I have it. But if you can do me a favor, you can bring up chapter 5, verse 66 and 68. 5, chapter 5, same surah, chapter 5, verse 66 and 68. You can bring it up. You can show it to them. I'm going to read now chapter 5, verses 43 to 47. 5, 43 to 47. Same surah, folks. Same surah. Several verses later. 5, 43 to 47. How do they ask you to judge when they have the Torah, which in is God's judgment? Then if they turn away after that, right, they are not the believers. They have, it contains God's judgment. So it's saying, why are the Jews coming to you, Muhammad, when they have the Torah that contain God's judgment? We sent down the Torah. In it is guidance and light. So Muhammad is telling the Jews, guys, look at the irony. Muhammad is being commanded to tell the Jews, you Jews, why are you wasting your time coming to me? You have the Torah. God sent it down to you. It has guidance and light. Right? We sent down the Torah. In it is guidance and light. The prophets who submitted, who surrendered, judge according to it. And the Jews who are guided also judge as well as those who are knowledgeable. They judged according to that portion of God's book entrusted to them, right? So do not fear people, but fear me, and do not sell my signs for miserable gain, right? And whoever does not judge by what Allah has sent down, they are the disbelievers. Now, folks, here's what's ironic about this passage. The Muslims tell Christians, don't judge by your Bible, it's corrupt. Your Bible is not reliable. It's corrupt. Come to the Quran. That's not what Muhammad taught. When the Jews came to Muhammad, Muhammad said, don't come to me. Go to your Torah, judge by it, because the prophets judged by it. Those Jews who are God-fearing judged by it. Those who are knowledgeable judged by it. If it's good enough for the prophets and the righteous Jews, it's good enough for you. Don't come to me. Stick to your Torah. But then it gets better. Watch here. And we decreed in it. We wrote in the Torah, right? Life for life, eye for eye, nose for nose, ear for ear, tooth for tooth. And the wounds equal, retaliation equal to wound. If you took my eye, I take out your eye. Punishment equal to the crime. But if anyone forfeits it by way of charity, it will be an atonement for him. And who does not judge by what Allah sent down, they are the unjust oppressors. Oh my goodness. But now notice what it says about Jesus and the gospel. Chapter 5, verses 46 to 47. And we sent after their tracks, Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming what is between his hands of the Torah, what he had access to, what he could pick up and read, what the Jews are reading, he confirmed that Torah of his day. He confirmed it as being true. And we gave him the gospel. 
in the gospel is guidance and light, and the gospel confirms what is between his hands of the Torah. So notice what the Quran says. Jesus and his gospel both confirm the Torah that Jesus had, that he could read, that he appealed to as the uncorrupt words of God. Now notice what it says to the Christians. And let the people of the gospel, the followers of the gospel, judge by what God has sent down in it. In what? The gospel of Jesus. And this is talking to Muhammad's contemporaries. Muhammad is telling the Christians, you have to judge by your gospel, because that's the gospel given to Jesus, which you have, judge by it. So what if you don't judge by it? And who does not judge or rule by what God has sent down? They are debauchers. Now, David, again, this is the same chapter. Same surah, surah 5. Why would the surah later on tell the Jews, go by your Torah, follow your Torah, it contains guidance and light. Jesus even confirmed that Torah. The prophets lived to that to up to that Torah. Why would Muhammad say that if the Torah had been altered, the text had been corrupted? Why then would Muhammad tell Christians, follow your gospel, because your gospel is what was given to Jesus, which you have, if the gospel no longer remain in pure form? Hmm. Yep, one of life's great mysteries. Uh, once again, Muslims run around. Muslims run around. Don't believe your gospel. Don't believe your Bible. Don't believe their Torah. They've all been corrupted. And Muhammad and Allah, whatever you do, you have to believe in the Torah and the gospel. You have no choice. You have to. You have to believe in them and judge by them. It's like, uh, I don't know, man. It's like Muslims just invent their religion as they go along. And it, it just bears no connection whatsoever to what Allah and Muhammad teach. I mean, think about, think about the irony here, Sam. You, say, you, you ask Muslims, where does your religion come from? It comes from Allah, through the Prophet Muhammad. And you say, okay, um, well, obviously, the doctrines that you believe in then are going to come from Allah and Muhammad. That's correct. Allah, Allah says your book has been corrupted. Really, show me that. Because we can show you the exact opposite over and over and over and over and over again. And notice, Sam, no matter how many passages we quote from the Quran, from the, the Hadith, from the commentaries to show them that their God and their, and their prophet affirmed our books, they'll say the exact opposite. What does this mean? It means that your religion, Muslims who are watching, your religion does not come from Allah and Muhammad. Your religion comes from your parents and your, your, your leaders who tell you what to believe, even if it co completely contradicts Allah and Muhammad. What does this mean? It means, again, according to Surah 4, verse 65 of the Quran, you are not Muslims. Islam means submission. How do you submit to Allah? By believing everything he says and by uh, by obeying Muhammad mindlessly in everything. And you completely contradict your God and you completely reject what 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 your prophet says about our book. Well, guess what? You're not you're not Muslims according to the Quran. Why are we having this discussion? You're not you are not Muslims. You are not Muslims. And and <laughs> Here, here's what's more amazing, Sam. Think about this. I'm gonna post uh, one of Halal Bart's again. Yeah, responses. Think about this, uh, Halal Bart. Uh, in, 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 in case you're, in case you're wondering uh, his intellectual ability. So you read, you read some passages and check the response. Halal Bart says Jesus and the Father had a beginning, according to John one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Two, yeah. the same was in the beginning with God. So God slash Jesus had a begin. Ha 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 ha! And and then he's been he's been posting this over and over again. Uh, so either you know either this is just a troll or he he just doesn't understand basic words. I mean the the, the opening verse of the Bible is in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Oh, yeah. Right. That means when things are beginning, God's already there. God's already there in the beginning when he's creating, right? Yep. In the beginning was the word. The word's already there in the beginning, right? So to conclude that this is saying that the word has a beginning and that God has a beginning, you don't understand basic language and you don't have the integrity to care. So why would we even, I mean, that that's, that's there's sort of this foundational, <laughs> This foundational uh, issue of hey, you have to be under you have to understand how language works. You have to understand how you know in the beginning work. You have to understand that. And if you jump all over that and say oh, this means God has a beginning, um, we can explain it to you very quickly. And if you do not understand very quickly, then it becomes pointless to have a discussion with you because you don't you don't words don't work with you. 
you can't comprehend words, right? So that's but 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 notice that that wasn't what I wanted to point out because I think this is I think this is a completely silly and it would be one thing if he said it and then retracted it, but he's just kept defending. Nope, it says since the word was there in the beginning, therefore the word had a beginning, and since God was there in the beginning, therefore God had a beginning. And you could ask Muslims, uh, hey, we're talking you know if we're talking about the world and we say in the beginning Allah was there, is that true? They would say yes. Well, according to Halal Bart, that means Allah has a beginning. Because he's yeah. there at the beginning. This is completely yeah. idiotic nonsense. But think about this. Think about this. This is what I wanted to draw attention to. Again, Islamic apologetics is, is founded upon this claim that the Bible has been corrupted. We announce over a period of months. I mean, we've been using the argument for years. But we announce over months that, hey, you know, you could come have a debate on this. Um we, we announced that we're going to have live streams on this. We invite every Muslim in the world to join us live to go through this. They all back down. And what do they do? What do they do when we give them the opportunity to respond? We say, go ahead, give us, give us a response. Ha <laughs> ha, Jesus and the Father were in the beginning, so therefore they had a beginning. Yeah. Hello, Bart. If I were you and I was at all concerned about God about truth, about reality, I would be in panic mode right now. Wait a minute. My leaders, my religious leaders, they've all told, my apologists, they've all told me that the Quran says the Bible's been corrupted and all the combined forces of Muslims in the entire world cannot come up with one verse. I really need to re-examine my faith because if Adnan Rashid and all these other Muslim apologists Shabir Ali, they've all been telling me that the Quran affirms the corruption of the Bible, and yet, when we take a closer look, when we slow down and say, let's actually read these passages, none of them come within a thousand miles of showing that the Bible's been corrupted. Instead, all the Quran ever does is affirm the inspiration, preservation, and authority of the Bible. My faith has just been destroyed. Islam has been wrecked before my eyes. Islam cannot be true. I've got some very important issues I need to be I need to be thinking about right now. I need to rethink my entire worldview. Instead of thinking anything like that, what do you do? Uh, 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 in the beginning was God, so God has a beginning. <laughs> this is what Islam does to you? This is what your religion does to you? It, it, it compels you to act like this? Yeah, it does. Exactly. Because that's how Muhammad would have responded. Actually, he would have chopped our heads off. But oh yeah, he would have beheaded us, take our woman. But now, just I want to add just two points to this for the sake of the Christians, because he's he's here mocking it. So mm -hmm. it says not before the beginning, in the beginning. Now the Christians know this, but I'm just going to share it for the Christians. Now two things I want you to know. It's ironic. Remember what chapter three verse seventy eight said? It said that they twist the words with their tongues. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what Halal Bart is doing. He's doing the very thing the Quran condemned the Jews and Christians doing. He's now twisting words with his tongue. With yep. his time, it's his fingertip. Shocker. Twisting the words, butchering the meaning of the words, wrenching them out of their rightful places. The very accusation the Quran makes against Jews and Christians. Muslims are masters of that. They are hypocrites to the max. They do the very thing the Quran condemns Jews and Christians for. That means if... If the Quran is to be believed, these Muslims are worthy of hell, worse than any Jew and Christian, because they're doing the very thing and, the Quran says. And notice, that's, and Christian, that's not you, that's the Quran. That's not you yeah. saying that, that's the Quran saying that. So, right? So that's not that's not David Wood and Sam Shamoon saying, oh, you deserve hell for this. Your Quran says that, he's just pointing it out. Yeah. Right? So that's it. You deserve hell according to your fake God and fake prophet. Because that's what the Quran said to these Jews and Christians. Because of that, Allah will fight you, subjugate you, and if you don't repent, damn you to hell. You, according to the Quran, will now go to hell for doing the very thing that made the Jews and Christians blameworthy enough to be subjugated, have their women raped, and be thrown into hell. But that's the first one. But secondly, just for the Christians. I I'm not interested with this child because he's not listening. Guys, just read on. I don't even need to go to the Greek verb, what it means. Just read to John 1.3. John 1.3, for my Christian brothers and sisters, it says, All things were made by him. Who? The Word. Nothing was made by him that, <clears throat> nothing that was made by him <clears throat> was made without him. So notice what it says. All things were made by him, and nothing that was made by him <clears throat> came into existence apart from him. So the text goes on to say, the Word is the agent of the Father, 
that brought all creation into being and nothing that has been created was created apart from him. He created all things. He brought all things into being. Apart from him, nothing could have came into existence. So no wonder he was there in the beginning because mm -hmm. he's the one who created the beginning, brought the beginning into being, and when he brought it into being, he was there with the Father. That's John 1, 3 for you, but yep. he's not listening. So I'm just saying no. it for the sake of the questions. No, and, and no, Halal Bart has to go. I mean, I mean, think about this. I said there has to be some foundation in, in like understanding words, like you can't really communicate. But I mean, think of this. If I... Um, if I say, in the beginning of my YouTube channel, David Wood posted a video, according to Halal, uh, Halal Bart, that would mean that I started when my YouTube channel started. Does, does everyone understand that? If I say, in the, at the beginning of my YouTube channel, in the beginning of my YouTube channel, I posted a video. Halal Bart would say, that means that David Wood came into existence when his YouTube channel, because he said, in the beginning, I did something. Right yep, there you go. Now, now, that's absurd. If you start a company or something, you said in the beginning, the founder of our company did this. That would mean that the, the founder of the company suddenly guys, if you're there doing something, <laughs> if you're there doing something, you have to if the company's coming into existence, you have to already be there bringing it into existence. How is my goodness? Yeah. And that's why and that's why I notice because this is obvious. We, we kind of went with this for a while, but it becomes pretty obvious. Right. We have a topic. This topic destroys Islam. What do Muslim Muslim apologists do? What do Muslims on on the on the internet do? They try to distract from the topic by posting some of the stupidest comments I've ever seen in my entire life. There and that's know. the response. We cannot answer you. We can't answer you, and therefore we will try to distract everyone. So maybe people won't notice that we cannot answer you. That we cannot pathetic, defend man. our beliefs. This is sad, man. It's it's the most, the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. Religion, yeah, no, most pathetic religion in the world. The most grotesque and wicked religion and irrational, and yet Muslims still blindly follow this false book, this false god, and this false prophet. May the Lord Jesus have mercy on them. Wow. Yeah, and guys, I mean, think about this. We're here trying to help you, right? You 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 think oh you're there because you hate us, oh, because you hate us and you want us to die? No. We understand that your leaders, your apologists, have filled your head with complete nonsense. And for some reason, you never bother to go and do any research to see how they're deceiving you. So we try to come help you. Guys, you're not going to hear, you're not going to hear the truth from your leaders. You're not going to hear it from your apologists. You're not going to hear it from your parents. You're not going to hear it from politicians. You're not going to hear it from the media. You're not going to hear it from the education system. You're not going to hear this from anywhere unless we tell you so we say fine we'll put our we'll, we will dedicate our lives to showing you how you've been misled and what happens you get mad at us you get mad at us for for actually caring for actually trying to help you and who do you love the people who lie to you what is this religion man yeah man. what is this from religion this religion that's this religion that says look if you take this seriously if you take this seriously, then those who lie to you, you have to love them. And anyone who comes and tells you the truth, you have to hate them. You have to kill them. You have to rape their wives. Oh, what is this, man? How is this not demonic? How is this not yeah, demonic it that it has this impact? Dudes, Mustafa, Halal Bart, if you're still here. Guys, God gave you a reasoning ability to use it. Not to not to completely warp it and twist it so much that you can't understand basic words and to where you'll believe things that even contradict uh, you, what you claim to believe. I mean, this is my goodness. It's so sad. And this is Sam. I, this is over. And it's like every live stream now. Every live stream. Muslims, here's a simple challenge. If you're right, you can do this. If you're right, this should be very easy for you. They can't do it at all. And they spend the entire time trying to change the subject. Muslims are actually some of the strongest proofs of the Bible that there is a kingdom of darkness. There are evil, diabolical, spiritual forces seeking to blind people from the truth. But here's the good news. Jesus Christ is almighty. The Holy Spirit is sovereign. And the Holy Spirit is greater than any demon and has the ability and the power to release Muslims from their blindness, to see the light of Jesus and fall in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's our prayer. Lord Jesus, bring them, as you brought Nabil Qureshi and others, bring them to saving faith in you. So that's our prayer. So that's all we can do. We're just vessels in the hands of the Holy Spirit. That's about it. 
Um, I didn't see the comment, but someone said that now Mustafa's talking about Deuteronomy. So yeah, yeah, he's going to keep going off topic. He's not going to focus. He's here to talk about anything except the topic at hand, not realizing any time he attacks about. By the way, uh, folks, did you know by attacking John 1, for those of you, he's not listening, but for your sake, if he's right, let's say John 1, guys, let's go with it. John 1 makes a boo-boo saying that God the Father Jesus came into being when the, began, the beginning began. When creation began, God the Father Son came into being at that moment. That means John is wrong. Well, hold on. Halal Bart, I hope you're listening, which I, I suspect you're not. Didn't the Muhammad in the Quran confirm the scriptures of the Christians? Wasn't one of those scriptures the Gospel of John? Didn't Ibn Ishaq in Sirat Rasulullah, the life of the Messenger of Allah, which in the English translation is pages 103, 104, say that John the Apostle wrote down the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel that God gave Jesus for the followers of the gospel from the testament of Jesus. And he says, Ibn Ishaq says, John wrote the gospel revealed to Jesus by God for the followers of the gospel. And then Ibn Ishaq quotes John 15, verses 23 to chapter 16, verse 1. So if the Quran says the scriptures of the Christians are the uncorrupt words of God, and Muhammad says to those Christians, follow your scriptures. One of those scriptures happens to be the Gospel of John. Ibn Ishaq quotes the Gospel of John as the Gospel written by the Apostle of John, and he wrote down the Gospel that God gave to Jesus. That means Muhammad, the Quran, confirms a Gospel that has bad theology, that has God and Jesus coming into existence when creation began, and Muhammad confirmed that gospel is true. He just buried Muhammad and destroyed the Quran. You see the problem? And for some reason, that's just too hard to figure out if you try to explain it to them. Well, let's change the subject. Let's change the subject. Well, well, Sam, um, yeah, we I don't no know. Paper. I don't know if we can even continue with Quran affirms confirms the Bible week because now that now that. At least on the first day, they were actually they were actually trying to answer, and that ended quick when they realized none of the verses say what they what they're claiming. Yeah. And so now we don't even have Muslims in the chat. I still have I still have again some screenshots. Maybe we'll do one more day on this. Sure. If we um, get any tickets, and just to confirm, AZ Creator, and you know what he's talking about now? AZ Creator, right. the one who mentioned Surfa. Hmm. He's saying, well, can you explain to me Matthew nineteen seventeen where Jesus says, "Why do you call me good"? You see. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the, the gentleman who starts with the Quran says the Bible's corrupt. When he got decimated in his objection, guess well, what he now? Well, I, I don't, I don't know that he's a Muslim. That's the one we are, we're asking if he's a Muslim or if he's just bringing up uh, some of the objections that they, that they use. Well, Matthew nineteen seventeen is not about top. So again, maybe uh, if he's not, praise God. I don't want him to be a Muslim. If he is, I pray he gets saved. Yeah. So okay. I mean, guys, you see that, right? He gave advance notice, and we've challenged, and we're on record. And David knows. I'm not just saying this. I will appear. With David, he can moderate, he can join in, right? And I will take, and God is my witness, I'll take Adnan Rashid, Shabir Ali, Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawa, all of them at the same time. And I'm not lying to you. The Lord bears witness. I'll do it. Come. Here are the topics. Put me in my place. Put David in his place. Expose us, Kufar, for Allah and his messenger. But you know you can't do it because Allah is impotent when he faces the true God and eternal life, Jesus Christ, the Father, Son. All right. Well, we've been going for uh, two hours. Again, we might do one more day just because um, I did. There are several more passages. There are several more passages that we haven't covered that, that Muslims use. But the, the Muslims in the, in the chat here know what's going to happen if they try to bring those up. Um, now, Mustafa, before we go off here, Mustafa, did you say, did you still want to call in tomorrow? Because we, we should go ahead and, and uh, get that verified now. We can talk a little, we can talk, uh, we can talk a little more in email, but uh, just want that confirmed now so that we know what time that will be. So Mustafa, asking a question now. Um, are you calling tomorrow? And let's find out what the what the topic will be because it doesn't look like you're capable of, let alone interested in, um, 
showing that the Quran affirms the corruption of the Bible. So no response from yeah. let no us know. No response from thus far, yeah. Yeah, let us know if you want to. And and Mustafa, if you don't, I just saw you comment what a minute or two ago. So we know you're here. So tell us now, because other than that, I'm not going to bother trying to contact you. Um, come on, brother. In humanity, respond because David <clears throat> wants to shut down. And uh, I don't know if you want to mention the super chat. I don't know. All right, know. and then there was uh, who was who was the was it Iman Iman Chowdhury? Was that the one who said he wanted yes. to? Okay, Iman Chowdhury, you said you wanted to. You had some questions um, about Christianity. You've left Islam. And well, glory to God, praise what? the Lord Jesus. That he left Islam, glory yep. to Jesus. I didn't know that. Right. I think if that if that was the one I was uh, I was talking about, someone said that. Someone said he left Islam, um, and had some questions about Christianity. So uh, he said, I also saw him post a comment saying that he uh, couldn't find my contact. There's two places you can get it. I, I don't want to list it because there are bots and things that go around find those things and then and then spam you with mail and so on. Um, for most people, and you can try different browsers, but most people find my email on the about page of my YouTube channel. Apparently, it doesn't work in certain browsers. Uh, so, so if if it doesn't work for some reason, but go to the about page, and you can actually click on a spot on the about page of my YouTube channel that will give you my email address. If that doesn't work, go to Answering Islam. Answering Islam. That that has a bunch of domains. Answering Islam dot Sam. Yeah, that, that one works in okay. countries where the other URLs are banned okay. in Muslim countries. So go to answeringislam.net and you can look up by author. Go to my page on Answering Islam and there's a there's a spot there for contact the author and it will give you it will give you my email address. You can contact us and since did Mustafa ever respond, guys? No. No? Okay. Since Mustafa isn't responding, um, I mean if you want to have a discussion tomorrow. Uh, happy to do that. Oh wait, Mustafa speaks did respond. Why'd you lie about him, Sam? You see, oh, this proves for his post. this. Yeah, yeah. This oh, proves we twist words. We twist words from the right place. Oh, right, so Mustafa say? speaks says yes in the morning. Mustafa, you're sitting here every night with us. Why would you want us to do it in the morning? Does it maybe it's morning there now? Is that what he means? That's what he means. Yeah, tell us what tell us what you mean, Mustafa. You, you said Is yes. it morning there now? For you, this time is morning for you. Our evening. No, I think he wants us to do our morning. Like, right, a, listen, like I'm, I'm you, flexible. Whatever you want to do with this guy, you let me know. Just yeah, I think him. he wants to do like eleven in the morning my time, which would be like eight in the morning your time. So, yeah, Mustafa, you're gonna have to tell us why you want to yeah. do it at that particular time when we happen to know that you're entirely free during this time. Yes, especially when him and I both need beauty sleep. Mm. Okay. And you need to tell us. And you need to tell us. Uh, what you want to talk about because again you clearly you clearly can't talk about this topic why because no one can no one in the world can show us where the Quran says that the Bible's been corrupted it can't be done Mustafa Mustafa I'm just trying to get specific so that the people here know we're looking for want to do it at this time Eastern time, give us the time and the subject so the people who are still here will know. Okay. Uh, Connor yeah. McLeod, Connor McLeod of the Clan McLeod said, uh, "Will there be a MMA fight anytime soon, Sam? Or did Hijab chicken? Yeah, uh, yeah, Hijab totally chickened out. I told, I told yeah. him, look, you know, it's it's a big deal to have a Christian apologist." doing mma fight so hijab is going to have to do three debates beforehand and hijab said no i'll do one debate and yeah. um and he, he changed the the rules but hey i'm yeah I, I, I told him there i told him there's no negation no negotiating there this is not sam is going to be in trouble for a long time if he does an mma fight versus uh versus yeah. <laughs> versus muhammad hijab so if hijab wants to do that then he's got to agree to three debates they can all be online very simple very straightforward could do it in three nights and hijab said no just one uh, and then yeah, he and I'm, and I'm the record by the way i'll do it if he does the three debates back to back i promise you i will have the mma fight yeah the and then, was, yeah was going and hijab down. said but i'll but i'll do one after the debate as well and it's like dude once you've lied to us repeatedly, we don't take that. That's the point of having the debates before the fight, because we do yeah. not trust you because you're a liar. Yeah. 
Um, I don't mind getting back in the ring. I need to. I want to see if I got what I used to have. I don't have it anymore. But hey, MMA, it's legal, baby. But anyway, but God is good. I haven't heard Mustafa respond. He's wasting right, our time. Mustafa, Mustafa, yeah, Mustafa, you're wasting our time. Tell us what time Eastern Standard Time and why you want to have this in the morning. There has to be a reason for it. And what topic? Other than that, we're, we're other than that, we're going to ignore you. And if you keep wasting our time, I'll just block you because we don't have time for this. Yeah, he's, he's not responding. All right, well, you if he does respond by email, let us let me know, bro. I'm flexible. I'll be there anytime you want. All right, guys. Well. Yeah. Still had a good crowd. We have about 1,300. Yeah. And he's like, too. It's that, unfortunate. That, yeah. That's what I like it when we all go live at the same time. We're not in competition, Ed, but still it happens. It is what it is. That's what sucks because, my goodness, man, you'd think – with 1.6, 1.8, 1.9 billion adherents all believing one thing, the Quran affirms the corruption of the Bible, at least one of them would be able to give us one verse. Yeah, no, they can't. They're humanly impossible. That's what's beautiful about the Lord Jesus Christ, among many things, because he's the God of truth, he's alive. He raises up people in every generation and guides them to show the truth of the gospel and find these holes. Let me do it the way Nasser Qadi did. The holes in these religions. And folks, if you learn the arguments, Islam is the most easy religion to destroy and decimate. I would say, maybe you can correct me because this is your field. I think atheists have stronger arguments. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, but man, it was Islam. It's so easy to destroy. Yep. It's it's like ridiculously easy. Come it's on, sad. it's that easy? It's sad. Uh, now Mustafa says tomorrow 10 a.m. Now, do you mean do you mean 10 a.m. Eastern time? Because that would be seven o'clock for Sam. You said it's the only time I have. Mustafa, you are here every night, all night. <laughs> if we go live for two and a half, three hours, you're here all night. And we say, okay, let's go live. Oh yes, the only time is uh, 4:30 a.m. your time. Get out of bed and then no, dude, no. <laughs> Right. No, I'm not. I said if you have a good reason for doing that, your your good reason is it's the only time I have free. Bull. We go live tomorrow tomorrow at eight o'clock p.m. You'll be there. You'll suddenly have the time. No, we're not taking you seriously, dude. So right. come up with a better plan, or just keep watching. Uh, send us a send us a message saying you want us to send you an autograph, and we'll be happy to do that. All right. Well, Sam. <laughs> it we, we we put it out there brother the year best, after uh, year year after in. year all we, we learn even got, by the way i don't want to cut you out we even have a sister who's more bold than the muslim men because she wants to now dialogue with me on skype so you got muslim women now showing more courage than their muslim male counterparts who are supposedly the scholars and apologists what does that say about this religion david come on now yeah and and notice last time we had uh Muhammad week where we invited Muslims to join us live it was mostly young Muslims who were interested um, the apologists were almost non-existent except for a uh, doctor uh, dr. Shwe oh, that, that ended fast yeah you, so, have you ever heard back from him yeah he's been saying he wants to do other topics and stuff like that but yeah I'm just not interested he doesn't uh, he never sticks he never sticks to the topic he jumps all over the place um it's you know there's no it's, it's not worth it we you did like six we did like six live streams with him yeah. five or six live streams with him all right um all right bro I guess all right that's it huh? all right that's it go. all right so maybe we'll be going live Maybe we'll be going okay, live. He said, okay, 10 p.m. Eastern time, if I can. He said, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Your time, 10 p.m., he said, if you can. 10 p.m. Eastern time? So 10 p.m. to midnight? Yeah, that means you're, yeah, that's right. Anyway, contact. All right, we'll see, we'll Mustafa. see. Yeah, send me a message, Mustafa, of, of a time. Uh, I Yeah. And I, again, I don't, if, you're sitting here, if you're sitting here watching us every night, I have no idea how you can, how you can say that. 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock p.m. doesn't work <laughs> because you're here every night. Um, all right. Well, we'll see what works. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, I don't know how much I'll be able – I don't know if I'll be – I should get out one video tomorrow. Other than that, I'm going to be doing some 
renovations tomorrow to make some space for my art room. <laughs> my Quran art room. It's going to be glorious. All right. Catch y'all later.